My name is Marcus Miller, and I'm Curator of Public Dialogue and Participation at the University of Saskatchewan. We're recording this from Treaty 6 territory at Homeland of Métis. Remote is a series of short interviews with artists, and is prompted by our extraordinary circumstances. We want to know how artists are coping, what projects they're working on or thinking about. And the first conversation is with Linda Duvall, a Saskatoon-based artist who talks about her work as a convergence of collaboration, performance, and conversation. Linda's work takes the form of community-based research. And in addition to two MFAs, she has degrees in sociology, English, and education. Her work takes the form also of photography, video, installation, and performance. And from my point of view, I think performance is a kind of a, 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 a center for uh, Linda's practice in general and informs all her work. Uh, she's exhibited across Canada and a good many international venues. So, Linda, how are you? Hi, Marcus. <laughs> Hi. What's been on your mind during these extraordinary circumstances? What are you doing? Well, it's been very interesting because in some ways I went back to what I'd done two years ago which is when I did the hole. And now I'm back looking at smaller holes in the ground every day. It, like, it's almost like cyclical. Because I was wanting to talk to you about that uh, project, which you know I think of as like one of your magnum opuses. You've done a lot of epic works and this is certainly one of them and I think it's one that you're sort of you you started it you know quite a while ago in different iterations but the, when I became aware of it it was you know for that residency in 2017 uh, where you sort of issued a global call uh, for a residency that took that would take place in a six foot hole that you had excavated on your acreage uh, your acreage is about an hour's drive from Saskatoon so Tell us about that. Okay, so it's 80 acres. And I, I think I'm very bonded to that land. Like it somehow matters to me. And so I really had wanted to sort of understand what was under the soil, particularly because it's native prairie. And native prairie has a significance because it's protected and endangered. And part of its significance is that the roots grow down at least six feet. So I wanted to dig a hole that, so I could see a cross section of all these roots. So this and land had never been uh, tilled or farmed? Or never been tilled, it's zoned non-arable. Uh -huh. um, and it's zoned non-arable because it's solid sand um, and it doesn't hold this, the moisture. But part of the grasslands is that these roots go down, you know, like endlessly. They go down more than six feet and so, they keep on, you know, as a carbon sink, it's crucial, probably more crucial than forests, because forests can burn down. And when we have fires in the prairies, the plants just come back, the native prairie. So that's what, where, where I'm living. And, and there's all sorts of interesting factors about that, about what grows, what doesn't grow. And so I, quite a few years ago, I dug this big hole and it was to look at the roots. And I do look at the roots, but I actually love just being in the hole. There's something about being surrounded by sand and it's total silence, no internet. And so I, I did a few things. I did one with the dog the first day because I was paying attention to how a dog examines it compared to what I was doing to examine it. And part of doing anything like that is trusting your instincts. I just saying that this is something that matters to me. And I didn't see it as an art project. It was something that, and, I, and it wasn't for another few years. But I used to, you know, admit that I had this hole. And, and so gradually got out there. So I did a piece in Toronto, which was um, a hole 
that it was with uh, Art Spin, and so it was 500 people and a choir. The night before the real event, and it was one night event, the night before it was just a choir and the curator, Rui and I. And it was, it was like so amazing. And then the actual event was terrifying because you had to worry about everybody, whether they climbed the walls, whether the walls would fall in, you know, just everything. So it was a and giant hole that you excavated. It was in the city where the, the MOCA is now in Toronto. Yes. And it held 500 people. It was probably slightly more. Um, and everybody trooped in and then like, and the choir was interspersed with the people. So people didn't know there was a choir. And it was an event where you don't, you just come, you bicycle to it. And then gradually this choir started to make earthy sounds. And the sounds seemed like so right. Having 500 people was, well, it was good for them, but you know, it, I, I definitely, it was a management issue. Like how do you keep everybody contained? And, and then they actually did, went out of the hole and an opera singer climbed a hill behind of rocks. And, and then there was this call and response. I said that if I ever did this again, I'd only do it with one person. And it's the kind of stuff you say after you've done something major like that. Yeah. And so the next year, when we're thinking about the, like I was invited to show photographs of the whole. Now, just tell me, uh, what, what year was that, the Toronto project? About? Uh, I think it was 2015. So three years approximately after you had your own hole excavated on your acreage. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a long-term thing, and most of my projects just go on and on. So I was, you know, I had it, was sitting in the hole. I, I, was, I was sort of studying the roots because they're, they just, they're, they hold the soil in too. And, uh, and so the first foot is actually, you know, it isn't sand, it's sort of composted roots. I'm asking you about this. It, it's sort of, it's really interesting to think about these two projects uh, together because they seem very different in, in, in your motive for this. I mean, the Toronto uh, iteration is, is uh, 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 very social. Um, it's uh, staged, right? In, mm -hmm. You've got the, the, the choir and the call and the response and all. And the uh, original hole that you have excavated on your acreage the way you talk about it sounds like it's really motivated by the land that you're talking about the roots and, and, uh, yeah. and that it, I, I, I'm sure it wasn't the motive in Toronto or you tell me, was it? Well, it was interesting because thus, in fact, there is different soil. The soil in Toronto was also sand. It was very similar. So we had a little bit of, you know, like a couple of days where we actually, played in the sand in Toronto too. Okay. Buried things, sand, dance, sang. But the, the event was probably, I, uh, I was invited to, to do something and with Rui uh, Pimenta and we, uh, and it just, it seemed like it would be nice to share the experience of being in the hole. So that's how it started. And then as it develops, then you realize, you know, there's a lot of people. And the hole, the, it's very different to dig a hole on your own land and to dig it in the middle of downtown Toronto. Because there are like lots of rules, regulations, complications. Um, and we we're working with the developer for MOCA, who also had his own rules. And so it was a different kind of experience. But in fact, once you're in the hole, it was the same. It was this presence of, of being surrounded by so, soil. And, and what happens with it? Like um, the acoustics are different. When you sing in a hole, it, it sort of comes back to you because it doesn't go up in the same way. Um, so there were actually, 
a lot of similarities, except that the key difference was so many people. Right. And so that's what I want to get back to, because, you know, uh, when I first experienced uh, uh, the residency that you did, you had a, um, a feed going from the, uh, the it was one on one, like one participant with you for six hours uh, over just one day or two days. And you had a camera there and people came with various projects. And when I walked into Paved Gallery to see it for the first time, you know, it was a video installation, uh, real time. And there were these two women kind of sitting there, baking in the sun and being silent and not doing anything really, except that you were both just there. And that so impressed me. And if I, you know, if I put my art history hat on, I'd say that that performance about just kind of being there and not it, it that it follows in a kind of an anti-art trajectory uh, in the sense that uh, it's very, very unromantic. That was not staged. I mean, except for, you know, uh, staging the whole itself and the residency itself. It was very uh, uh, unromantic and it was very anti-theatrical. So what happened kind of felt Im improvised to me in, in, in many way and, and that you, uh, you got together with uh, strangers. Some of these people you might have known a bit, but for the most part, I think they were strangers. And uh, the artifice that you set up the whole itself, that concocted situation seemed like a tactic to unearth authentic performances with people, things that might have been unintended or involuntary. You know, I think you're saying some really crucial things and things that maybe I wasn't aware of when I started it. So every day, you know, I, we'd have breakfast, then we'd walk down to the hole and it was the same time as the gallery started. So we went on gallery hours, 11 till uh, five, six hours. And, um, I didn't know what people would do. People put, like, they had to apply and then sort of say vaguely what they, how they were thinking about it. But in fact, once you got in there and nobody had seen the hole before, they just really often put aside their plans and we just, you know, sat and talked or stand around or were just present with it. And so it was, it was, it wasn't a performance in the traditional sense but it was responding. And, but he also, people come with different skills. And that's something that I, I sort of was, I'm beginning to understand. So some people, we, sometimes we sang to the sand, sometimes we wrote songs, sometimes we lay in the sand. We, there, it was what people knew and were comfortable with and wanted to explore. So, there are people who knew birds, which I always thought a big bird was always a hawk. Apparently there's, we have vultures around. So it was just every day I saw something, I learned something new about the whole myself in parallel with the person who was experiencing the whole. And that was a, a phenomenal gift to just be there. And, and six hours is a long time, so it's sort of open-ended. And after you know a few hours, you don't notice the time anyway. And so we didn't have any um, any internet in the hole, so nobody had. We didn't have a way to know what time it was. So it, the, it ended when the the tally light on the camera started flashing. And often, you know, we'd still be there half an hour later, still doing. So it won't. So even though the camera was there, it wasn't necessarily about the camera. Sometimes we're not in front of the camera, the camera's one place and we're somewhere else. Uh, so it was, it's like a non-performance, but it was, we were conscious of, of, of the time and the space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm just, uh, I was uh, so impressed with that project. Uh, um, and it seems to be like very much an ongoing thing. And I just want to ask you uh, one more thing now about the whole, uh, because uh, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, what are you doing with the whole now? You started out by uh, talking about a few things or what's the whole doing to you? Well, the whole is, is not a static item. It's, it's, a, it's a performative, it's, it's changing 
all the time. So it used to have straight walls and a straight floor, and now it's totally curved, and it's because of the wind. So it's it's got this very organic, natural form. And as of yesterday, the the so there's bank swallows. I forgot to mention them. They so we were there, and. We were there a few days and then the bank swallows arrived and thought it was a good place to make nests. And because I think because we were there already, they just settled in and were quite happy to ignore us and have us there. And so they're back. As of yesterday, they were flying around. Um, but it, it's interesting that I think the hole will get reclaimed eventually because the, there's a ramp to get in, and over winter the ramp, you know, degrades yeah. badly. Like as in, because the water run, is a drainage ditch as opposed to a ramp. So Linda, you don't uh, like maintain the whole, the, the original form, or I would have to get a backhoe in again. But are you? <laughs> you're, that, it, it sounds like you're letting it be and it's I'm letting it be yeah and I think paying attention because it's quite beautiful to have this you know geometric shape become an, uh, like a, it's got a lovely flow and it's not as deep as it was I think that's a great great project it's very inspirational to me you're an inspiration to me I thank you for doing this Linda okay. thank you Bye -bye.